Hey survivors, my name is Nick Z, the lead developer of Dead Matter. It's been a long time, but we've got a brand new vlog, and this one is jam-packed with content. First up, we've got the AS Val. This was created for a backer who goes by the username Clean. He's also a Twitch streamer, and I've left a link to his channel in the description. Clean, thank you so much for your contribution. All of us at the studio appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. We hope you enjoy playing the game once the time has come. The Lee Enfield has been added to the game, as well as the 303 British ammunition to go alongside it. It can be reloaded via stripper clips or on a round by round reload. It has four variations and they each fill a different niche for the rifle. The P226 has been added to the game. It utilizes a 10 and 15 round magazine, it fires 10mm and it will be a solid choice of sidearm. The 1911 has a new tactical variant, it's got glowy rear iron sights and it's a lot easier to aim in low lighting conditions. The 22 pistol has been added to the game, this is a weak early game pistol, it will get the job done and also be becomes extremely quiet when it is suppressed. The SVT-40 has been animated and will be making its way in engine soon. You'll also be able to reload this rifle round by round, or via the box magazine, or via a stripper clip. We now have a second programmer on the team, Gunschlinger, and even more changes to the codebase itself. The medical system, SATA character system, the equipment system, the weapon system have all been completely rewritten from scratch. The medical system now treats conditions much differently than before, allowing us a lot more creative freedom on how conditions can affect the player. Weapons still feel the same way that they did before, as the animations haven't changed, however, that's where the similarities end. The weapons have also been completely rewritten, and we've added some changes to the way that recoil and spread work. We've also added stability, which will pull the weapon left or right depending on how long you've been bursting for. We've also created some new flashlights and laser attachments for the weapons. You can toggle between the different settings depending on the attachment that you've got and the weapon will remember the selection the next time that you pull it out. This uses our dynamic item data system and is what legendary weapons will use to track and save their kill count. You can also now change the reticle inside of some weapon sites. There will be some additional controls for zoom level in the near future. There are some new impact effects added by our new coder. They're a lot better than the system that we had before. There's been a lot of heavy lifting and optimization within the inventory system. We've also increased the density of our grid. This is so that we can make item sizes as accurate as possible, which also factors into the brand new pouch system. The inventory has also seen a lot of small UI improvements. We've added some new tooltips, new item icon renders, items being categorized by color, maximized the inventory grid space by reducing non-important widget sizes. We've also got a new info widget system for elements such as the item name, magazine capacity, condition, etc. Since the equipment system itself has been rewritten, we've also added a few features such as being able to take off a piece of equipment that has items stored inside of it. There are weight penalties and other restrictions tied into this. Equipment can now also be damaged. This will result in cells dying, which doesn't allow items to be placed into them. If a cell is damaged while an item is in it, it will lose its weight reduction bonus from the equipment that it is contained within. We will be implementing a mechanic that allows you to repair the dead cells. We've also added the tool belt system, which is used to store a specific set of important, useful items. The items that you place into your tool belt will carry over to your next life unless you're playing on a hardcore server. This is so that you always have some sort of progress and things to work towards that cannot be reset on death. There is a new hotbar system. You can now rebind weapons to different slots. Certain pouches now act as holsters that items can be drawn from, such as the waistband on any pair of pants as well as the holster on a police vest. We have removed two of the on-back slots that we previously had. This is due to the fact that you will always spawn with a pair of pants and have four holsters total. Two on back for primary weapons, and two waistband slots that allow you to equip a secondary weapon, such as a hatchet or a handgun. We've got a brand new work in progress main menu that was created by our new programmer. It currently features a server browser, complete with Steam integration, a settings menu with FOV slider as well as the ability to toggle motion blur, bloom, and other annoying or expensive post-processing techniques off. There's also a few audio sliders for those of you that really enjoy diving into editing their audio settings. He's also programmed some brand new animal AI that will be used to populate our world with wildlife. They'll also be a source of food for when cans are no longer easily found inside of the local Safeway. I also think that the birds are pretty when they're flying through the sky. We've added ambient occlusion volumes that we can use to fine tune the darkness levels within buildings. These volumes also help out due to the less than accurate global distance field being used, well, in the distance. 
We've made some changes to how world streaming works in our branch of Unreal Engine. We can now tell Unreal Engine 4 what levels we would like to load during runtime. This enables us to do a lot, such as having a random section of world that only ever loads once. What this means is that a location could be used for a military checkpoint, a near a camp, or simply nothing at all. We can link locations to also be dependent on each other, which affords us a lot of flexibility and allows us to set up remote locations that are related to a primary location. And last but not least, our world has seen some amazing work by the art team, led by none other than the talented Shirk. We've got a brand new town in-game, and it's got a lot of locations for us to explore within it. There are lots of brand new structures that have been added to the world, and this has been an extremely productive period for Dead Matter. The town that has been added is one of the largest additions to the world so far. It really helps set the scale that a lot of the smaller towns in Dead Matter will be having. We've got a new motel variant. It's located right on the edge of Dead Man's Flats near the highway. This place will probably get checked out by players walking through the nearby area. You've been warned. There's also a new gas station variant which can be found within the town. Since our world is very large and people in Alberta really like gas, we decided to mix it up a bit. This is usually true for anything that we feel repeats too much. Um, gas stations and motels are the biggest examples of this so far in the game. There's this new wizard hut thing. It's currently located down the street from the apartments that have been added by the art team. These apartments will contain a lot of loot and will likely be targeted by players moving through the nearby highway. Plan accordingly. Dead Man's Flats has a bit of a sprawl and also contains a small residential area. It's currently using grey box assets, but it will be replaced by the sexy houses that we're currently showing off on screen right now. There are also a couple others that will get added by the time that we get to that point. There's also a new giant mountain resort that is near Dead Man's Flats. It's got plenty of small cabins for you to explore or for you to make into your next safe house. We've also added the best investment that the city of Calgary has ever made to the game. The exact placement of this beautiful prop is to be determined and god help us all the day that it does. Nomad has been helping us get some in-game objects taken care of. He's done an amazing job on some of the medical items as well as some of the items that we'll be using within the tool belt system. He's also created some head and chest mounted flashlights for when you're not feeling too bright. We've now got a gore mesh that's been created by our talented character artist Dogtooth CG. I threw it into our primitive gore project as quickly as I could just for a quick test. I'm excited to see what we'll be able to achieve with this in-game with a lot better shading. We've also got some new additions to our development team. We've brought on a new writer, a new animator, a new programmer, and a new 3D artist. There are currently plans to bring on some additional members after this vlog. That's it for Vlog 08. These past two months have been filled with tons of hard work done by the entire development team. I'm an extremely proud lead developer. Given how much work was accomplished over the last two months, I don't even think we could have made it this far without the help and support from the community. You guys seriously rule and I thank each and every one of you guys that have supported us so far from the very bottom of my heart. Want to help out with the project? You can. Show us some love by sharing this video on social media or you can back the game via Indiegogo. Want to interact with us? Feel free to drop by our Discord or our forums, the links are in the description. Thank you for watching this to the end, we truly appreciate your support. Uh, thanks again to Clean, who is our first boomstick to your backer. If you're still here, you should go check his channel out, the link is in the description. Peace out.